Yo guys, welcome back to another video. This is going to be of a more advanced tutorial for the stencil buffer thing, because apparently a few people wanted me to, uh, so I'm just going to be doing that. What I have here is, it's pretty much just a blank project. I've set up a main scene, and I have pre-made this model that we're going to be using. Uh, it's just a hallway consisting of a bunch of mesh instances. You'll be able to download this entire project in the description, but you can easily make your own if you wanted to. You'll see why we're going to be using this in a second. But first of all, let me just make a bit of a basic scene that we can place our stuff in. Okay, so I just made a little ground. Just pretend that this is a, uh, a proper game scene. So the first thing that you're going to do in order to use the stencil buffer is you're just going to want to make a standard material 3D. And the first thing we're going to be doing is the new outline shader. So we'll just make an outline and we can just apply it to this. You can obviously change the color, but that's not the thing. You'll notice that when you scroll down, there's a new stencil tab, and you can do this outline. Now, you'll already notice that there's a bit of an outline, but it, it's kind of broken, and that's because this cube is really low poly. Um, outline only kind of works if you have a higher resolution mesh. So if we, if we switch to like a sphere, then you'll realize that it works fine. It's a bit big, but you can see that, you know, we have an outline. Now there is one more method that you can use to make an outline that's not the stencil buffer method. And let me just show you that really quick. Now that involves you basically having a material on your thing and then you're adding a material overlay which is basically your outline and then you're adding the grow and then just doing a different color mode but obviously this method's kind of scuffed and it, it doesn't work all that good sometimes. It basically looks the exact same, kind of. But what you'll notice is that with the old one, when you duplicate it, and then have two meshes overlap, it sort of like overlays over and kind of glitches through. But with this new... Uh, with this new outline shader, when you duplicate it, it'll actually, like, merge. So you can have multiple objects that share one single outline, which I think is pretty cool. And uh, potentially could be useful for characters and stuff. This looks even better if you give it a bit of a tune shader where you just crank the roughness all the way down and then give it a diffuse and a specular. And it pretty much just looks like a 2D object, almost. And that's pretty cool, but that's not all that you can do with the stencil buffer. Another useful thing is the X-ray. With the X-ray, you, you can basically just see your object through the walls. That way it works the exact same, you just make a standard material, name it something, let's call it x-ray. And then, down here, you just do x-ray. And pretty much, when something is covering it, you can pretty much just see it through walls. It's pretty useful if you wanted to have like an item or something that a player was supposed to be able to see and like give them a location you can do a little bit more with it like you can change the color 
That's basically it that you can do with the x-ray. It's pretty useful. I'm sure there's other stuff that you can do with all of this, but I barely have any idea of what I'm doing, to be honest. And there's people that are way smarter that'll probably figure out cool ways to do. But this is what I came up with. The last one, it's a bit more complicated, and this probably has the most potential for cool stuff. Uh, and that's the portal thing. So we're gonna need this hallway model that I made. And as you can see, it's it's literally just the hallway. Now uh, you can see the entire hallway, which isn't ideal. So we're just gonna make another mesh, and we're gonna call it the portal door. We kind of already did this in the other tutorial, but I'm just gonna do it again. So basically, this uh, this is gonna be our door, and we're gonna cover this hole completely and we're just gonna go into the geometry and make the transparency be completely high or even if you want to make it look more like a portal uh, I think we did this in the last video but you can just kind of make the transparency be like partial pretty much just do whatever you want I'm gonna make it fully transparent because I like how it looks and then uh, we're gonna need two materials for this the first one being the portal which, uh, which goes on the portal as a material override. And then what this one just does, you're going to use the custom. And this is going to be writing to the buffer, and it's writing a 1. And then any object you want it to be able to only render, uh, the number has to match. I'll, I'll show you in a second. We're going to make... We're actually, we're not going to make another material. What we're going to do is modify these materials. So for this wall material, you can just go right in here and just modify it. You'll see that it kind of gives you a bunch of errors. Uh, but we're going to fix that. You're going to want to make sure it says read. Uh, and it's reading if it's equal to 1. So it's looking for your portal and it's trying to render to just the portal. Anything on your screen that doesn't have a 1, it won't render. You have to make sure it only works if your transparency is set to alpha, which now you can see it's completely disappeared. And then you have to make sure the render priority is 1, which means it'll render on top of your portal. There you go. We're just going to quickly do that with the other ones. Just set the transparency to alpha, and just make it read if it's equal to 1, with a render priority of 1. One thing I notice is these lights are actually just kind of there. Uh, I forgot to give them a, a material. Let me just do that really quick. Uh, don't worry, this will be fixed in the example project, obviously. There we go, I've given the lights their own material, and then you can just go over here and modify it to make sure that it renders properly. And there, it's uh, it's completely invisible. And, yeah. Now, one thing is, when you set the transparency to alpha in, uh, in a texture, it kind of makes shadows just not function properly which is kind of an issue because this is supposed to be like a dark hallway after a bit of messing around i realized that you can go here and make sure you have your environment added into your scene you can go into the directional light and in the light settings you can just tell it to ignore layer two and then inside your Inside the uh, the hallway mesh, you can select all of the uh, the floor meshes, and inside here you can just tell it to render onto the two. And 
And now the shadows are working perf perfectly fine. So now that I've showed you all of the things that you can basically do, you can kind of combine them all together to make more complicated things. I honestly have no idea what I would use this for, but one thing that I've seen other people use this for is, uh, is a boat. And I'm just going to make that really quick, and then I'll show you how it works. Okay, so, uh, here's my boat. It's, uh, it's more like a bathtub. But you can already see the issue. The, uh, the water... The boat should be sitting in the water, but... Obviously the water clips through the boat. So, what I've seen people do is set up a shader so the boat renders in front of the water, basically. And, uh, and I'll set that up and then I'll explain it for you. Okay, so uh, it took a bit, but here's what I ended up coming up with. I have no idea if this is the uh, the proper way, because I never watched any of anyone else's tutorials. But this is just what my brain came up with. As you can see, the boat, you can like sink it into the water, and uh, the water doesn't ever go inside the boat. Basically how I did it, is I have a boat, all of the... Uh, all of these meshes, they have just a standard material, nothing special. And then we have this mesh, which uh, it's basically a cover. It sits above the entrance, and it has a transparency of 1, so it's just it's invisible. And it has a material override, which is this water cull material, which basically just has the alpha, and it's, uh, it's writing a 1. But then on the water, this is where it's a little bit different. The water is reading like normal, but it's reading if it's not equal to 1, which is the exact opposite of this. So it's basically rendering everywhere except where our little cover is. And obviously it has a render priority of 1. Uh, so that's just what I came up with. I'm sure you can do lots of other things, but... This is already pretty useful, uh, and you can do more than checking if it's equal to not equal. You can do basically all of the comparisons. So you could have multiple things on multiple render layers, and I think it could get pretty advanced. But uh, I'll have this entire project for you to download in the description if you want to mess around with it. Uh, or just copy over my shaders or whatever. You can do whatever you want with it. Uh, but anyways, this is basically all I know about the uh, about the shader buffer so far, or the uh, the stencil buffer. I don't even know what it's called, honestly. Uh, 